So thank you guys all for coming out to Artisan Happy Hour. We have an amazing guest with us today who I'm super excited about. Uh, Artisan Happy Hour is where we uh, help wake up, stimulate, and celebrate the artist's soul within all of us. It's where creativity meets mindfulness in an incubator of awesomeness, and the outcome is hopefully miraculous. Sometimes it's not miraculous. Sometimes you start creating stuff and it's starting to look really weird, but that's just because you're in the process of it. If it looks, if it still looks weird, just keep going with it, you know? <laughs> don't, yeah. don't quote unquote abort it, but like, you know, just keep working with it. And we all go through those trepidatious times with our creations, you know? And sometimes it can happen if you're a painter, you can be painting a picture and you'll find yourself in the midst of it thinking, this is no good. But it's not that it's no good, it's just not done yet, you know? Which is true for spiritual practices as well. If you think that you've hit um, a hot spot, you know, God just hasn't finished his sentence yet. So hold on for the happy news. The other quote that uh, this, this program is based on is a happy outcome is sure. So that's what I was just talking about. Like, just wait, patience is the virtue of kings. So today our guest is Elizabeth Keats. She also goes by Betty and Libby. She has uh, many different names because she's been hiding from the law for many years. <laughs> <laughs> I met her a couple of years back at a Course of Miracles convention and we found out that we lived in the same hood and we became friends and she, I got to witness her become a, a um, licensed reverend and uh, she's a teacher of A Course in Miracles with Miracles Live 365, and she runs her own groups, and she is also an amazing writer, and she uh, is a teacher. She's, her, her background is teaching as well. So I'm really grateful to have her here because she has a message about messiness. I, I, I've never heard, I don't know about messiness. Um, I've had a pretty pristine life. <laughs> Apparently, it can be an attribute. We don't want to clean up too much of our rough edges. She's here to give us some tools around being messy. So thanks for coming out today, Elizabeth. Well, thank you for having me, Maureen. We're going to talk about having a messy life. And um, I want to tell you how I came to this idea. Because I think um, at this time in our lives, many of us are having a really difficult time. I am sure... I am not the only one who's had some trouble navigating the past few weeks. I mean, perhaps I'm the only one who burst into tears during an episode of Guy's, of Guy's Grocery Games, uh, <laughs> but that's the kind of thing that's happened over the past few weeks where, uh, you know, you just find yourself reacting in ways that you've never reacted before. And what I realized it was reminding me of, um, for almost 30 years, I taught English at a local community college. And I loved my job so much. It was one of those jobs where you go to bed Sunday night and you can't wait for Monday morning so you can be back in that classroom with those magnificent people again. But my hearing was going and I, I simply couldn't hear my students anymore. So I had to retire. And when I retired, I um, couldn't find my sea legs. I couldn't adjust. If I suspect many of you are like me, you like a life with order in it. You like to know when you get up in the morning, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna meet these people, I'm gonna do this thing. Um, there's gonna be community, there's gonna be meaning, there's gonna be laughter. And when all of that is taken away and every day is just expanding in front of you with nothing plugged into it, it's terrifying. It can be terrifying. And uh, that's how it was for me the first probably month, maybe month and a half that I retired. I was like, my life's over. You know, there's nothing left. I don't even know what I'm here for. I don't even have grandchildren. Sorry, Laura, had to get that in. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. They, um, that, that was really hard for me. And then one day I had this marvelous awareness and here it comes, ladies. I made, and gentlemen, I made visual aids. Look, is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I decided that what I needed was a messy life. 
Now, I know that we're not allowed to be messy anymore. I know there's a Netflix show and I know there's a book and we've all been trained that there can be no messiness. We have to go into our closets, remove everything, put it in boxes, zip it over to Goodwill or Salvation Army. That's our job now. Um, so that's not what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about taking each of these letters and keying something in each day that goes with these letters. So we're gonna start, let me see if I can do it. We're gonna start with the letter M. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the letter M in my life stands for meditation. Um, I, you know, I think if you have never had a meditation practice, but have always heard people talk about meditation practices, what could be a better time to start one? And as someone who has, and, and believe me, this is not a brag, uh, somebody who's been meditating every day for nearly 50 years and still is impatient and has a bad temper from time to time, I'm not saying it in bragging. I'm saying it because I think people often have the wrong impression of meditation. They think meditation means I'm going to sit, I'm going to close my eyes, I'm going to be still, and I'm going to be at peace. And if that doesn't happen, they get discouraged and frustrated, and then they stop meditating. Um, I, I started meditating in a really dumb way. Um, I took a vow to meditate two and a half hours every day mm -hmm. with a five-week-old infant who cried 24 hours a day. <laughs> 24 yes it wasn't the Laura who's shaking her head no it was the other one who's probably not on the call anyway yeah that is not the way to start a meditation practice um so it took me a long time for my meditation to become um my refuge and my sweetest place of my day and um, there's a famous quote I like because you'll hear so many quotes about how wonderful meditation is. But one of my favorites is from uh, Chagyam Trungpa, who says, it's simply one insult after another. <laughs> so if you've ever <laughs> sat down to meditate and went, oh, no, why am I thinking that? Why am I? That is perfect. That's exactly what meditation is. Meditation is the place where you can't run away from the shit you like to run away from. It's sort of like a 10 or 15 minute solitary confinement where you are faced with, this is the stuff I'm avoiding. And I love the way Maureen says, when the thoughts come up, you can just tap them on the head and send them on their way. You don't have to buy into them. You don't have to, anal God, don't ever analyze them. You can just be with them, love them, let them go, love them, let them go. And as you do it long enough, there will be a time, I promise, where meditation is your favorite part of the day, where you start your day in that meditation and then everything that follows is sweeter because you began with that time. One of the things I like to think about with meditation is that you don't wanna think you're doing it alone. You want to always sit in the presence of whoever you believe in, whether it's a God, whether it's a higher power, whether it's Holy Spirit, whatever terminology you use to think that there's something beyond you, you bring that presence in and then follow your breath. There's a million ways to do it. There's an app called, yeah, so Insight Timer is a wonderful option. Um, and I, and I want to say there are so many different kinds of meditation. Insight Timer will offer guided meditations and uh, meditations to put you sleep for the whole night, meditation to put you sleep for 10 minutes, meditations, I believe, to put you to sleep in an airport. They got them all there. And it's, uh, I believe, um, to get on it is is free. So that's a, that's a good option. And then uh, drjoedispenza.com, that's another uh, source for wonderful guided meditations if you're if you'd like somebody to help you to hold your hand as you begin this practice so my m stands for meditation some of you might have an m that might be making art making music 
Um, music is, is another wonderful, watch my dog just had to, I have a whole pile of boxes to get this thing up to the right level. And yeah. <laughs> Things just got messy. <laughs> oh no! He's demonstrating, he's giving us a great demonstration of messiness. Well done! <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that would be making a mess. Yes, that would be my dog knocking all the boxes over. Um, you can go away now. You've done your part. <laughs> you know, when I first started um, almost 50 years ago, um, actually it was 50 years ago, that I, I was really troubled because so much came up. And, and the, uh, the yogi, it wasn't my guru that I would have later, but I, it was a yogi who taught me. And he said, <laughs> unless you're my age, you're not going to get this because I actually went to a school like this. It's imagine a bottle of ink that is attached to a table and you want to get the ink out of it. The only way you can do it is pour water in and let the ink overflow and overflow and overflow. And eventually you'll have, yeah, I see he knows what an ink well is. Uh, <laughs> that way you can finally have that clear water in it. That's what all those thoughts are, and you have to allow them. You can't beat yourself up for them. You can't feel like you're doing it wrong. It's a way to learn patience. And when I learn patience, I, I'm going to let you know. A anybody else have a question or a comment? Yes, Maureen? Yes, it, it's not easy to meditate. But I will say one, one positive aspect is that sometimes I get intuitions and clearer direction a lot of times you know, you might find this too, like you just sit down and all of a sudden you have the solution that you were chasing for so long. Absolutely. Well, it's amazing that that can happen. Like there's an internal wisdom that's so much smarter than me. And if I would just sit down and pay attention to it, I wouldn't yeah. have to effort so much. Every time, every time that you're actually open to it, you're absolutely right. Maureen. It's the cheapest way to change your life. You know, it doesn't cost any money and it doesn't, you don't gain weight and you know, everything about it is a blessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what you got for letter E? Okay, letter E is not one of my favorite things at all. Uh, and that would be exercise. And uh, because it is not one of my favorite things, I looked up all the reasons why exercise is good. Uh, it gives you happiness. It relieves depression, anxiety, and stress. And then I'm just, I can't do this, but I'm going to do it for fun. Apparently, serotonin, endorphins, and norepinephrine are all involved. So those things are really going to make a difference. Um, so if you are like me, a person who can go into depression rather easily, Moving your body is the best thing you can do. And not moving your body is the worst thing you can do. So it will relieve depression. You know, it, 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 and especially now, uh, Joni already put up there. My favorite form of exercise is to take the dog and go out on long, long walks in the nature preserves. And um, I found the link that, that she just posted uh, called Nature Now. Um, and what it is, it's a guy who knows exactly where, which flowers are blooming in which nature preserve all over the state of Illinois. I mean, how cool is that? So right now, if you want to see bluebells, he has the place where the bluebells are. So, I mean, to me, to get out in nature and exercise all at the same time is heaven. All right. Uh, here's, another, here's another exercise thing. Your skin, who knew? It provides antioxidant protection, promotes blood flow that protects your skin from signs of aging. Wow. It makes you smarter. Exercise makes you smarter. It improves blood flow to the brain and helps health and memory. And it helps with sleep. And my final one, no, I got two more. It helps with pain. Exercise can help control pain that's associated with uh, lower back pain, fibromyalgia, chronic soft tissue shoulder disorder. Exercise helps with all of that. And sex. Apparently exercise helps with sex, I wouldn't know. But those are all benefits of exercise. So what you might wanna do is think about 
what you enjoy doing. How do you like to move your body? I love walking. I like biking too, but biking actually goes too fast for me. If I walk, I can really slow down and see everything and smell it and listen to it. Um, so yeah, think about that. Do you love to dance? Then put on music at a certain time every day and just, yeah, there you go and just dance your little heart out. It's, it's magnificent exercise. There are so many places online where you can either pay for or find free exercise routines. My, my favorite E-word is not exercise. It's eating. And I was going to say that if you love eating as much as I do, then another benefit of exercise is that you can eat without feeling guilty about it. You don't have to feel like, ooh. Um, the other thing I was thinking about eating too, um, it's like exercise. It's a gift you can give yourself. It's, it's a way to um, nurture yourself, to love yourself. I'm one of the very few single women who really loves cooking for herself. I, I, I've been a vegetarian for 50 years almost. And, you know, I really love, and I'm trying to transition all the way into vegan. I, I still like pizza, but I'm working on it. Um, yeah, and if you take that time to lovingly prepare a meal for yourself, it's, it's really, it's, it's just wonderful. You know, all of these things I'm talking about today, they're not things we would wake up thinking, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. They're things, that's why I made the messy business thing. They're things that we can hook into if we want to be loving to ourselves. We can choose instead to get really depressed and scared and anxious and down. It's very easy right now, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna be messy. Okay, we're going to, uh, now we're going to get to the interesting stuff. We're going to get to some Sanskrit words, because I got to prove my, you know, that I know something about this shit. Sanskrit word, seva. And it's a word that describes the act of selfless service. Its meaning is said to be embodied by the root word, saha, meaning with that, and eva, meaning to. So together, it so it means together with. Now you might be thinking, why doesn't she just say service? And there's actually a reason besides showing off that I know a Sanskrit word. It's because there's a way in the word seva that is different. Service in the Western mind tends to mean, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to help you out. I have something you don't have, and I'm going to go out of my way and take care of you. And there's a hierarchy that isn't pretty, uh, especially if you're a course in, in Miracle Student, where, where we say uh, things like uh, one person who has temporarily more gives to someone who temporarily has less. It's, it's, a, it's a thing that isn't universally true. But the other reason, I, I used to go to India frequently. Oh, I was going to actually get my basket so I could show you how I used to carry this huge basket filled with sand on top of my head. We'll uh, wait. Oh no, will you really? Okay, I'll go get it. <laughs> I mean, uh, oh, we don't get to see Elizabeth with a basket on her head every day. <laughs> Um, okay, you ready for this? I'm so glad I'm not a messy housekeeper because this could be covered with dust that will now be all over my head. But here you go. <laughs> you, would, you, you would walk around like that? Yeah, with a ton of sand on the top. And then you would walk up this, this huge hill and then dump the sand into the ravine. That's how they built the sangat that I used to go to. It, it, I have photographs that look biblical. They, they don't look like anything that took place in at current times. It was, it was really cool. Um, yeah, so, so what I wanted to say about when I, when I would go to India and go to, these, uh, san, to the Sangha, their attitude about serving you was always, thank you for letting me serve you. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of the Western mind of I have to thank you because you helped me and now I'm in your debt because you helped me and all that gunk. The, the attitude of Seva is that we are joined together and as the Course says, 
uh, we are always, what we give is always what we receive. So if I can give to you, it comes right back into my heart. So, so we want to think each day, as I said, when I was doing this, I was like, hey, I've done my meditation today. I've got my exercise. What am I going to do for Seva? And of course, it was easier to do Seva when you could leave your house, right? Donors Choose is a lovely website because it's actual teachers will put up there what they need to help them teach. And uh, you can just send, you know, it might be $25, it might be $50, whatever you can afford, and it will help them. I can't imagine how teachers as, are doing this right now. I really can't. Um, amazing to me. Um, the other thing I mentioned to, um, <laughs> to Joni to share with you is charitynavigator.org. And, and you probably all know that. If your Facebook page that looks like mine, every other thing is somebody asking for money. And many of them may be wonderful and responsible and terrific, and many of them may not. And charitynavigator.org, they actually uh, rate each one and let you know whether the money is going exactly where you want it to go. So that's something you can do. Um, you know, you can pick up the phone and call somebody that you think might really need to have a conversation, you know? Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of people lonely right now. As somebody who lives alone, I've had some real lonely days for sure. Um, if you know somebody like that, pick up a phone. And you know, everybody, nobody picks up the phone anymore, right? We, we've all given up that. So text them and say, would you like to chat? first so that you don't you don't have to risk the nightmare of actually calling somebody who isn't expecting the call oh my god my phone's ringing Beak, what do i do maureen's not like that she's the only person i know who still loves to talk on the phone the rest of us are like ooh, the phone um so yeah i would love to open up now to any oh you know another one i think raven shared this at speakeasy once she called it a fairy walk where you bring you some plastic bags and take a walk around your neighborhood and pick up the garbage. It's a great idea. I was actually thinking about that. Like, what could you do right now? Volunteermatch.com, unless it's volunteermatch.org. <laughs> it's one of those. But in that, you can tell them what you're interested in doing. And, and they're not all things you have to leave your house for. Uh, one of them was uh, an organization that has you reading books to children and they record them and the children have access to somebody lovingly reading them a book so we can find opportunities to be of use it's it's very important to be of use if we're going to go to bed at night feeling happy you know the things we're talking about are limited now because we're indoors but i love the idea that if, if you're not a very busy person, that seva becomes a natural part of your life once. And I, I do, you know, I do want to say that we don't want it to be, again, as I said, the way service can be interpreted. We don't want it to be that way. And I, and I want to share one of my favorite Horse and Miracles quotes. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. Uh, that was the bookmarks we used to hand out at Speakeasy. You, you created those bookmarks and handed them out to people. So that's like a beautiful and creative Form of Seva. Thank you. Well, actually, um, I hope Jenny, I don't know if Jenny's here, but she actually printed them up and made them the first time I didn't make them. But I shared them. We do our Seva where we can. I have like two friends who send mail, <laughs> real mail, and you get a card in the mail. It's like, oh, happy day. Nobody does that anymore. And what a great gift to do. And I think the post office needs a little help right now too. So buy some stamps and send each other some love notes. Okay, then we're at another Sanskrit word, satsang. Sanskrit is a term meaning being in the company of truth or right association. Uh, refers to a group of like-minded people engaging in spiritual dialogue. The root word sat and sangha means 
true community. Uh, therefore, satsang could be thought of as a friendship or relationship with truth itself. So um, I used to go to satsang with my guru frequently, uh, and that is the literal satsang that is meant in Sanskrit. However, if you think about finding time each day for your spirituality, whatever that means to you, in communion with other people, if possible. So um, here's my plug for my favorite part of the day, Miracles Live 365, uh, which is a phone call every morning with Maureen. One is at 645 and one is at 820. And we are doing the lessons from the Course in Miracles. Um, the Course in Miracles, um, I was going to have it. If anybody has a book, hold it up. It's a big, fat, juicy blue book. And it is very, very difficult to understand by yourself. Most people, my copy, I realized the other day, I bought it in the 80s, the early 80s. And I didn't start studying it until about seven years ago uh, because it's, um, it's just obtuse. It's very hard to understand. So one of the things I did when I retired was I started going to meetings where we read a paragraph, talk about the paragraph. Miracles Live, the, the book includes 365 lessons, one for every day of the, of the year. And what we do on Miracles Live is we read a lesson and we talk about how well we understand it and don't understand it and how well we apply it. And some of us, I think Maureen, it's seven years, right, that you've been doing that. And some people have been part of it for seven years. Um, babies have been born, people have died, people have lost children, all kinds of things have gone on during that time. And we, I mean, it's a pure, it's pure satsang, Maureen, I see it that way, that we support each other in our connection to truth. And uh, it's, it's so special and there's nothing like it. And, you know, I, Maureen didn't know I was going to do this, but it will be starting again July 1st with lesson number one. Uh, I'm in the group, uh, the 820 group that started January 1st, but you can start any time. Uh, it's, it's fabulous. Now, if you're not into A Course in Miracles, there's 12-step programs. There's, um, there's, there's all kinds of other ways that a group of people can get. Um, my brother, who's on the call, he goes to Socrates cafes where they talk about philosophy in a group together. The, the concept of community, especially if like me, you live alone, it is so important to reach out and spend time with other people every day, every day. It can be, as Shannon said, you know, a very short phone call. It can also be sometimes, sometimes our morning calls are 20 minutes. Sometimes they go on for an hour. But um, it's because we want to be there that time. So that's what satsang is. And I highly recommend you find a place to put satsang into your life. I think satsang is my favorite. I just, and I love that you brought up the 12 step too. I mean, when you gave us that definition of a group of people helping each other to find truth, it's beautiful. I. One other place that I found uh, impeccable and awesome sets on is in a theater company. Uh, even our writers group, you know, like we have people who read and then we help each other see if there's a blind spot or, I mean, I feel like that's moving people towards truth also. So creative circles can be good sets on. Absolutely. I agree. It, it's interesting because we're not just talking about being together. Um, I'm I started to say, you know, parents of young children sometimes get together, but often it's not to communicate with truth. Often it's to bitch and moan. And, and that is absolutely not what we're talking about. I mean, there's, there's a place, sometimes we have to vent, but, um, but the idea of staying in the venting, that is not satsang and that isn't good for you. Um, what's good for you is to get beyond that to the place where we get to the why in this messy lesson. The, the issue is really never that there isn't something there. It's, it's loving ourselves enough to make the choices that are good for us. Um, yeah, that's, that's, where the, that's where it is. So, um, <laughs> the why is for yes, yes, yes.
th this is where I was going to talk about Byron Katie. Uh, I know many of you know her work, so I don't feel like I need to go into a lot of detail about Byron Katie. She's one of the people I think that is enlightened. Um, she started out horrifically, horribly depressed, suicidal, and um, in a institutionalized when she had a moment of absolute enlightenment. And um, her book is Loving What Is, um, A Thousand Names for Joy. She has a number of books, but I'm not even gonna tell you to buy a book. I'm gonna tell you another website, thework.org or com, whatever Joni wrote up there. The work is what it's called. What I notice in myself, is the tendency to be saying no all day long. No, the dog shouldn't knock over the boxes. No, it shouldn't be cloudy today so that I'm in the dark on this video. No, that guy shouldn't be running the country. No, that guy shouldn't be doing this. No, there shouldn't be a pandemic today. There's, um, our minds have um, a constant litany of ways we're looking at things that are happening and we're judging them wrong. This shouldn't happen. That person shouldn't have said that. That person should have said that. Um, there's an there's a infinite variety of ways that we criticize what is. And Byron Katie's idea is that you say yes to what is, because it's there, because it's there. Doesn't mean you don't deal with it. You know, if the dog knocks over the boxes, I can pick the boxes up and put them back, but I don't have to do it pissed off, do I? That's, that's where that comes from. So the work consists of, it's so much fun and so powerful. The work, you can take an app on your phone, it's free, I believe, the app on your phone. It's called The Work. And um, she tells you first to make a list to judge your neighbor. So you make a list of everything that person is doing wrong, a husband, a child, a president, anybody. They're doing this and they shouldn't do that and they should never have done that and nobody should do that. You make the list, you rip it all out of you, don't even hold back. And then she has four questions. You ask the four questions, you turn them around, and by the time you're done, you are a new human being. It's amazing. It isn't easy, but it goes so deep. And the questions are simply things like, is it true? Are you absolutely positive it's true? How do you feel when you believe it's true? And how would you feel without that belief? It is. It's so simple and the power of it is beyond belief. So um, I wanted to end with that idea of saying yes to what is. We are stuck in our houses, yes. And we can make this into a fabulous opportunity that will change our lives forever. Um, say yes to the opportunities that feed your soul. Now, I don't mean literally somebody says, go into the city and buy me that and bring, me up, bring it all. I don't mean that. I mean if you are called from your heart to say yes, say yes. Um, and yeah, oh, and so, um, and I wanna close with um, a little story about my cat and my dog, um, because that's all I'm living with. And so my stories have to come from, used to come from my daughters, now it's the cat and the dog. So every day, as I say, I get my exercise. I put the leash on Sally and either we get in the car and drive to a nature preserve, or we walk around the neighborhood. The cat jumps up on the window and stares out at us with murder in her eyes. How come you take her out every day and leave me here all by myself with nothing to do? Absolute rage. And she's still standing there when we get back an hour or two hours later with just, how did you, you do love her more than you love me? At night, I sit and I watch Netflix and Sophie gets on my lap and purrs and gets all kinds of love. And the dog who weighs 52 pounds stares at me with absolute hatred. Why can't I be on your lap? This isn't fair. You like her better than me. 
And I felt like that's often how we see our lives. We look at what other people have and we are feeling hurt that we don't have it. Or we look at what people don't have. We, we make comparisons and it never helps us. It never helps us. Um, one of my favorite quotes from the course, what could you not accept if you but knew that everything that happens to you, past, present, to come, is gently planned by one whose only interest is your good. We are each in the lap we belong in. We're each in the walk we belong in. We each have the people around us that are perfect for us, or we are alone because it's perfect for us. This is an opportunity to sink into what has been planned for your growth. And uh, yeah, and I think that's it. So thank you for being such a great group. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I, I loved it. God, what a, what a wealthy wellspring of wisdom you are and all of those resources. You really filled the well. Thank you so, so much. So it was meditation, exercise, service, community, and saying yes, and cel celebrating others' good fortune. This was great, you guys. I really appreciate you all coming out. We'll have it recorded and up, and um, more information about our next happy hours to come. Elizabeth, that was just so great. One more round of applause for this great wisdom. And, um, and I love giving it an acronym, because I will remember to try and use this every day. I think they are important. <laughs> now I can feel good about <laughs> messy thank you <laughs> thank you hey, thank you for coming you're very thank welcome you. Good job, Mom. Hi, thank Uncle you, elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, thanks so much elizabeth it was great